when the McRoberts maneuver fails to resolve shoulder dystocia, subsequent maneuvers usually succeed, though some are riskier than others. That's according to a report published in BJOG. The data came from 205 cases of shoulder dystocia encountered over a 15-year period. In almost every instance, the first maneuver attempted was McRoberts, in which the mother's legs are hyperflexed tightly to the abdomen to widen the pelvis and flatten the spine. This, combined with suprapubic pressure, was effective just over a quarter of the time. When McRoberts' maneuver failed, rotational methods or posterior arm delivery were equally effective, with a cumulative success rate of 79%. When one of these approaches failed, the other was tried, resulting in a final success rate of nearly 95%. Rates of brachial plexus injury and clavicle fracture were about 8% and 4% respectively for the McRoberts' maneuver. Rotational methods were associated with brachial plexus injury rates of about 4%, humeral fracture rates of about 1%, and clavicle fracture rates of about 6%. These compare respectively to rates of about 21% and 7% for posterior arm delivery. Lateral traction was used in four cases. It resolved the dystocia but resulted in three brachial plexus injuries and one clavicle fracture, leading the authors to warn that the approach must be avoided. The authors concluded that confirmatory studies are needed, but that their results indicated that most cases of shoulder dystocia can be resolved by the application of three maneuvers within four minutes. This is Dr. William Ferdet for Reuters Health, the Doctor's Channel, Daily Newscast.